Hey guys, this is Diane here from Design Creative. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about how to create a conditional form using Elementor. Now, please remember to like and subscribe if you like this tutorial and share it in your social networks if you think it is helpful to you. Now, a conditional form is basically a form which reacts depending on what the user selects. So for instance, on my website, on my form, if a user starts putting information into the text area, a checkbox shows asking if the message is urgent or not. Now we're gonna do something a little bit more flashier than this in this tutorial, so stay tuned. So as I said before, we are gonna be using Elementor, but funny enough, you do not need the Pro for this tutorial. I see a lot of you guys saying, yay! But you do need to purchase a different plugin called PyoteNet. And it's basically an add-on for Elementor. It's like a general developer type plugin that has tons of features in it. The form builder is only a small fraction of what it actually does. It has a slider builder. It has a sticky header feature. You can collect payments. It's got conditional visibility. It's just so much different things that this plugin does. And to be honest, this channel is probably gonna be talking about this plugin a lot. So it's definitely worth investing. Currently, it's about $70 for the lifetime and they are actually looking to change that very soon. So if you want to snap it up, I would, I can't even stress. You just need to get that shit now. Like they're just, what are you waiting? In fact, stop and buy this stuff right now. Don't worry, I'll wait. So now you've bought the plugin, you need to install it like every other plugin and you basically go to the settings screen and you activate what features you want. From here, you would activate the form builder and the PAFE form builder conditional logic. Okay guys, so here I have my blank canvas and one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to create a field and I'm going to call this my project planner. So I'm gonna call it project planner here. Now this is a form ID and what you have to remember is that every single field that you use has to have the same form ID, okay? The field ID is different, this has to be unique. So I'm going to put in name because this is going to have the name of the person and in the placeholder which is down here, I'm just going to put down your name. Oops, your name, okay? Now I can easily uh, duplicate this keep that the same and I'm going to put here email. I'm gonna change this type to email. As you can see, we've got loads of different types that we could use, but I'm gonna use email. And I'm gonna change this placeholder to your email, okay? Uh, we can duplicate this field again, okay? And here we're going to put in your message and we're gonna change this type to a text area. So now we have our text area. Now, one thing uh, we might want to do is add an acceptance field. So if we duplicate this again, and what I'm going to put is acceptance, just like I have on my website, I'm going to use the acceptance type here. And I'm going to put, is this urgent? Is this urgent isn't really this is urgent, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this and let's just preview what we have. So we've got the name, the email, and it shouldn't say your email, it should say your message. So I'm gonna change that. Let's update that. If we go in here, what I want to happen is when I type in your message, this is going to appear. So in order to do that, we click on the acceptance box, scroll down to where it says conditional logic, and we're gonna enable this, and we're gonna add a new item. So it says show this field, which is this field, if something, something, or. So what we wanna do is go back to our messages field, and it's got the short code message, okay? This should actually be your message, it shouldn't be uh, there shouldn't be a space, it should be no spaces whatsoever. So I'm going to grab the your message section 
or let's go back here, we'll grab the short code and we're going to put in your message. So we're gonna put, if your message is not empty, then show. Let's come over here and we type in your message and as you can see, it's shown. Now, even though it says uh, add your field short codes, you could also just put in your message like this. And if I update that and refresh, you can see it still works, okay? Now that's a very basic way of getting the, the form to work. But say if I want another field, I'm gonna duplicate this field and I'm going to say, this is the reason, what is their reason for contact? So I'm gonna use the field ID, change that to reason. And with the type, I'm going to select the select field. And here I'm going to put reason for contact. So I'm gonna put web design as one reason. I'm gonna put a pipe and then I'm gonna put the word web design with no spaces and underscore. I'm gonna put logo design, a pipe, then logo design, then SEO, and then general. Okay, so this would be a reason for them to contact. Now say if um, I only want the re this field to only show if general is there, if they select general. So we can do that again by clicking on the text area, conditional logic, we're gonna enable this, we're gonna add an item, and we're gonna say show this field if the reason, and here we're going to put equals, and it will say, is it a string or is it a number? We're gonna say a string, and we're gonna put the value as general. Now, if the value was web design, then we would put web underscore design, like what we did before, but this is for general, so I'm just gonna put general here, and let's update that. Now, if we come here and I choose logo design, nothing happens, web design, nothing happens, but general, you can now see the form shows up and if I type in here, you can see now this is also activated as well. We could have fun with this. So let's say if we duplicate this field again, I'm only duplicating it just for speed. Obviously you can spend your time uh, going over it if you have time to waste, but <laughs> clearly I don't. Um, so what you can do, we can have fun, like I said, if they selected web design, maybe we want to question what stuff they already have. So I'm gonna put web design Q for question, and I'm going to choose a, let's say we're gonna use a checkbox for this, okay? So instead of reason for contact, we will put down, I have my domain, and we'll put a pipe and a domain. I have my hosting, pipe and hosting. I have my content. And there's different things that we can do with this too. So for instance, if they do have their domain, maybe we want to ask them, what is your URL, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out another field here. I'm going to call this For My D Project Planner and I'm going to put website link here. And in the type, we're gonna use a URL, okay? And the placeholder, we're gonna put link to your website. And we only want this to show if they select I have a domain, okay? So in the conditional logic, we click enable, add item, and we're gonna say show this field if something, something, something. So we click back on to the uh, questions we want to just grab here where it says web design queue and we'll go back to where are we uh, where are we link to your website and we want to say show this field if web design queue and instead of equals, we want to put contains, okay? So if the web design queue contains domain, then show this field. So I'm gonna click update. And if we come over to here, refresh, you could see number one, this is showing. It shouldn't really show unless the reason for contact shows web design. So we'll fix that in a minute. 
But if I click on I have my domain, you can see that the, the it links up, okay? If I don't click on it, then it doesn't show at all, all right? So again, like I said, the next thing we want to do is maybe we can duplicate this field and we can put down, instead of website link, we could put hosting link. And here we can put link to your hosting provider. And in the conditional logic, we can choose the value to be hosting, okay? We can duplicate this again. And with this one, we're just gonna put content upload, okay? And we could choose the file upload for this one. And as we go to the conditional logic, we can choose, what did we choose? Content, so we're gonna use the content for this one. So we'll click here and we, oops, and we will choose content here. Let's update. Now, if we refresh and we choose, I have my content, the upload form shows, I have my hosting, hosting provider link shows, I have my domain and so on and so forth. Now, I only want this section to actually show when somebody chooses the reason for contact to be uh, web design. So I'm gonna drag this underneath the field and in the conditional logic, we're gonna enable this, add an item, and say show this field if the reason equals string web design and let's update that now if we refresh this is all we see if I click on logo design nothing comes up SEO nothing comes up web design now we have our questions I have my domain yes link to your website I have hosting yes link to content I have my um, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is basically how you would create a conditional logic form using Elementor. You don't need the pro version for this. Like I said, you would only need to purchase the PilotNet add-on and you will be able to create any form that you wish. Now, one thing that's missing from this form is the submit button. So in order to add that, you just add the submit button like here. It has its own module. Again, you would need to make sure that the field, the form ID is the same, okay? You've got a number of actions which you can do as well. So you can submit a post, you can add a, a, a product to WooCommerce, you've got remote requests, you've got login, you've got register, you've got two emails, you've got redirect. Um, there's many things that you can do here. You've also got a way to enable Stripe payments if you wanted to do that too. Uh, we've got the recapture here and we have our, re our conditional logic as well, which uh, you might need, you might not need, whatever the case may be. Now, that is it. That is how you would create a conditional logic form using PyopeNet. Hope this tutorial made sense. If it was too fast, please slow it down. And please subscribe, please share if you feel that this has been helpful for you. And I will see you on the other side. Bye.